I think there's a lot of well-meaning people who just say, well, the other things we've tried didn't work, so mm. this must be the thing to do. And that's a weak basis, I'm sure. Um, anyone would agree in logic. Um, what are the practical things we should be doing, you've alluded to some of them, um, to improve a lot of people, particularly in those really remote places? Okay. Um, first of all, generally speaking, those Indigenous people who have, who have made it um, have either they've been born into good circumstances like, my, like myself or they've escaped, there's been a, an exit strategy for them to access modern services and opportunities and that sort of thing. So in, you know, we know where the, generally speaking, where the problem areas are, it's with those Indigenous people who are living in remote areas that don't have access to the sorts of services you and I and everyone else take for granted. So we either need to um, bring the services to them and someone like Warren Mundine is a, a good person for talking about remote areas and, and uh, development and getting in services and jobs and that sort of thing. Or if that's not viable, well, then we do need to make the tough decision of moving the people to where the services are. And I'm not saying just rip the people up from the land. We need a, a sensible and sensitive exit strategy to locate them in places where they're going to have access to uh, fresh food, modern services and that sort of thing. Yeah, too right. It's that unfashionable but important concept that's actually about integration with the modern world and, you know, working together rather than entrenching difference. Um, Gary, you've written a great book on this subject, The Burden of Culture. It's available through Quadrant Books. I'm always up for a book plug. Um, it's a really brave book, though, and I think it offers some practical solutions on these really important matters. What's your prescription as it relates to the need to help people get the skills and the integration they need to be able to flourish? Well, let's, let's add to Anthony's notion of the exit strategy. Part of that exit strategy has to be inside the mind. The way people live, the culture under which they live, is hurting them, right? This is the sort of thing you celebrate on the East Coast, but it, it, it is, is a damned thing in Northern Australia. People are behaving in ways that are not suited to a modern economy and a modern world. They're harming each other. So part of the exit strategy, really, is to talk to families when the children are very, very young and make it quite clear to them if they stay here, if they maintain an attitude that says, I don't need to go to school, I don't need the white man's world, I accept we want them to deliver all the goodies as a matter of, you know, paying the rent. There has to be a change of attitude that was apparent in Aboriginal leaders up until about the 1970s before these new leaders became so arrogant that they say, in fact, that they're better than us. Anthony, Gary's book talks about the Aboriginal industry. What does that concept mean, this Aboriginal industry, and why should we be concerned about it? What does it look like on the ground? Yeah. Um, it, well, one part of the, the, the part which I focus on often is the assumption that only Aboriginal people can understand Aboriginal people and therefore should only access and Aboriginal service. And I have nothing against good quality Aboriginal services. Indeed, I've been privileged to be associated with a few of them. Um, but the insistence that right across the board, Aboriginal people sh um, need to access only an Aboriginal type service can be very damaging to them. And, you know, when you, f you follow this to the, the logical end or close to the lo logical end, one area where this is particularly evident and the damage is very clear is the insistence of Aboriginal kids who need care and protection should only be placed in the hands of Aboriginal carers. Again, I have no problem if the carer if, is Aboriginal and they provide a, a loving, caring, nurturing home, but far too often, you know, we know these stories and I've, I've heard them from uh, people who tell me the, the kid goes from one bad environment to another bad environment, so it should be now, rein in the powers of the Aboriginal industry and focus on quality. So, for example, with what I just spoke about, kids in care, go to any home, regardless of the colour of the carers, so long as they are competent, caring, uh, and provide a safe home. Um, so, again, I'm not saying Aboriginal people should never access an Aboriginal service, but there, sh there should be a choice, 
and those services should be held to a, a high standard just like any other service. Uh, but you know, again, this is all rooted in this myth that Aboriginal people are fundamentally different to non-Aboriginal people and therefore only Aboriginal people can speak on behalf of and act on behalf of other Aboriginal people. Well, it should be what's on the inside that counts and um, that's one of the things I love about both of you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Gary Johns and Anthony Dillon.